Okay, it's Friday. Oh, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And every Friday we take a look at Trump week. I wouldn't say celebrate it. I wouldn't say that. No. We just take a look at it. And one of the things uh, last hour on Life and the Law, we had Scott Harshberger, who was former Attorney General of Massachusetts, and my brother Gene Fidel, who teaches law at Yale. And they talked about an organization called Lawyers Defending American Democracy, which is an effort to sort of invigorate mobilize lawyers around the country to be, you know, to be more, uh, more, more articulate uh, and more forceful about protecting the rule of law, uh, which they're not doing. The silence is deafening about lawyers and uh, people, you know, who are trained to defend the rule of law are not involved in the conversation. Um, and, you know, one of the, one of the things uh, is they, you know, they're, they're not going to be um, a leader. They're, not, uh, they're just going to try to foment more conversation, more action by lawyers and legal organizations, especially you know, like the American Bar Association and law schools all around. This is really a serious problem because if the lawyers don't do anything, then mm -hmm. they buy in. The acquiescence mm -hmm. is deafening. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, this is a problem of major magnitude. Um, is this a solution or what? I think it'll help. I think everybody needs to put in their two cents. Like what Chairman Cummings said at the end of that hearing, when someone asks you in 2019, what did you do? Did you stay on the sideline silent or did you say something? And I think it's important for everyone to start talking about this again. Yeah. And if the administration comes up with some cockamamie legal twist, which right. is just not true and not constitutional and unfair and mean, um, somebody has to say something. Who right. better equipped to say something than a lawyer who's trained right. in the law, who has dedicated his career and often his life to protecting the rule of law and advancing the rule of law? Um, so um, I, I think, you know, we should, we should talk about that on the show. Yeah. We should find out what the lawyers are saying. We should compliment them when they are speaking. And we should, you know, try to mobilize them, just as uh, my brother and Scott Harshberger are, are trying to mobilize them. Maybe we could start inviting one to come on the show no. to talk about it. They said they'd come back. We'll talk one by one by one by one by one. Lawyers in this community, <laughs> right. which are... You know, not so easy to get lawyers in this community to talk about it, right. and members of the bar to talk about it. Right. And maybe we can do our own lawyers defending American democracy right here on Trump weekend. All right. Hey, what do you got? Well, the way I see it is the gears of government, the way this government was intended to function was a, a, a system of checks and balances. And for, <clears throat> in my mind, we're not seeing the balances or the checks, excuse me, the checks right. stand up. We're not seeing the Senate. We're not seeing, well, we are seeing the House now uh, stand up as one of the checks and balances. But there's a whole litany of other, of, of other sources to stand up when something's not quite right. And we definitely are in a world of something not quite right. So the question is, at what point now does the, you know, the citizens or the, the voters of this country, are they going to start writing to their, their congressmen and saying enough's enough? The Bar Association, I'm sorry, but also um, the media. When is the uh, Professional Society of Journalists going to stand up and say, you know, enough is enough? And we're, not seeing, really we're not seeing anyone right. stand up to the level of, the, of now's the time. Actually, I'm sorry, but it was a year and a half ago. Two years ago was the time. But we've right. lapsed in two years, and here we are. And so if not now, when? We can't miss this moment. We just can't. Um, I think... In my mind, he goes more powerful every day that we don't actually do something concrete that stops him and says this is wrong. I don't know why they are so hesitant to file this impeachment, even if it doesn't go all the way through. They keep saying, well, there's nothing worse than a failed impeachment. Nah, there is something worse. No impeachment at all. Is worse. Status quo is way worse. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because the status quo is eroding under us. Yeah, It well, is. Well, let's look at a case where the attorneys of this country, be it in the colleges, the universities, the bar association, let's look at an example right now that's taking place this, this week, and that is Trump is denying um, his aides to be called in on a subpoena basis. Right. He wants to um, prevent McGahn being called in on a subpoena and basis. And he's calling him a liar, too. He, he's <laughs> now Stephen Miller, because right. of the immigration issues, he's saying he's not going to come in on a subpoena basis. Since when does the President of the United States bar a legal subpoena from Congress. 
Don't use, Why? The, don't use the word bar. Okay, we'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> the legal bar or the bar. Okay, but here's a, here's a point, and here's an opportunity for the bar association to say, wait a minute, stop this. Right. And they're not at this point. Yeah. Now, what's interesting in, in you know, these few moments, and for that matter, in, in the show last hour with uh, Scott Hoshberger and, uh, and Gene Fidel, um, is this. Um, we're not talking about the Democratic candidates, you know, uh, advancing their platforms. We're not talking about them fighting among themselves about, uh, and, and, you know, their constituents fighting among themselves about who's best and who's not best. We're not talking about that. We're talking about re reacting to what is going on in Washington right now. This is not, we're not talking about the election. We're talking about dealing with what is happening right now. Because there is so much bad happening right now. That's right now is when we should face, you know, face those issues. You know? The election right. is the biggest issue, I think, that we have that is the most important thing that people need to start looking at, thinking about, talking to all of our new little tech geniuses that are coming out of college on how to protect our country from the same thing that happened before, because Trump is doing nothing. He's doing abs, well, why would he? It helped him win last time. Why would he want to change it now, right? So somebody has to do something about it, at least to start well, how about, how about talking impeachment? about you, it. You mentioned that there seems to be, uh, you know, more reason, more... Um, yes. That we, we seem to be uh, more open to impeachment, at least uh, I think the three of us anyway. I know um, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I am. Uh, I, I know it's hard, and I know a failed impeachment is not so good, and there's a lot right. of resistance. But, but, you know, what are our choices? We can go back to censure. You talked about censure the last time. Yep. Uh, you still I'm more in favor of that. I'm yeah, more in favor of that. I looked into that, and I'm, I'm less in favor of it now after looking more into it. It's really nothing. It's really nothing. It's, a it's, not, it's just a statement it's that's a statement. not going to make a lot of difference. All it's going to do is create a lot of hoopla okay. that's not going to make a difference. So if we're going to create hoopla anyway, I say let's create hoopla about something that's going to make a difference. Okay. So I used to be for censure, but I'm not, sorry. I have to disagree on this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's and, all right. That's and good. I, know, I feel you. you're coming in our direction on this. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it, but you don't know it. <laughs> okay. Again, I mean, Trump is actually using this uh, on the White House lawn yesterday like a, like a maestro. Oh, yeah. He's saying, oh, well, these, they're just, you know, they're mad, madly driven to further, you know, trying to damage my presidency. They're obsessed. And go ahead, because the American people are waiting for things to get done, and that's what my administration is here to do. So he's, we're yeah. playing right into his, you know, his song, his song sheet. Yeah, well, I think what's interesting, I, you know, and we, we've talked about this, is that it's, it's really brilliant. It, it's, it's brilliant in the way, um, you know, the dictators have been brilliant in the past. Um, what you do is you divide the country, uh, and, you, and you, make, make, you polarize the parties, and then you say that anybody who doesn't agree with you is operating on a, on a political basis. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a step transaction sort of mm -hmm. thing. And that's what he's doing. He's saying, if you don't agree with me, then you must be politicizing this. Right. Um, he's politicized it. He's right. already politicized well, remember, it. Remember, in the last week, they're saying he's both the victor and a victim all in the same sentence. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you listen to his... his his overtures, um, that's exactly how he's playing it. Yeah. Um, you know, how but, schizophrenic is that? Well, I, you know, I think it's really getting crazy, to, you know, to trip off schizophrenic. is really getting crazy now. And the things that he's doing are so outrageous, even against what he was doing a few weeks ago, that we really have to, we have to step up. The lawyers have to step up, and everybody has to step up. So what happens if... if, if um, the oversight committees and the, the, the committee on the judicial in the House, um, they subpoena and there's this blocked. They're just blocked by Trump himself. They have to enforce it in court. And how right. long does that take? Well, you know, you have courts that have been stocked with uh, conservative judges. Right. Um, I don't know exactly what would happen and where it would wind up. And if it winds up in the Supreme Court, I certainly don't know where it's it's going to, I, I mean, I believe, notwithstanding an article in this morning's Times, that the Supreme Court um, is, is going to al allow the citizenship question on, on the census. It's going to allow that, even though it's obviously a way to suppress voting right. um, and, and change the, the dynamic of, of, of distributing right. funds, tax money, out into the community. So uh, it has to go to the courts. This, okay. And I think he's setting it up that way, but... 
Can we rely on that? I mean, if you look at a timeline, it looks like before you can go down the road of impeachment, you have to get these answers, more answers from McGahn, from AIDS, you know, all this right. more information, right. more than what Mueller got, Mueller got in his investigation. The problem is that that's going to take so much time. It's going to take the way that political capital that you were given in the midterms to do something for the American people. So go ahead, just keep running out the clock, and that's what the president's doing. And in the meantime, the Democrats are being damaged by all these investigations, all investigation and no work in Congress. Well, and yeah, and frustrated investigations. So that's I why I say that. censure now, based on the, the, the report today, censure immediately. And get that out of the way. Check mark that off as a you know mission accomplished. Then start start drafting laws and passing laws. Yeah. Don't fall into the trap of not doing anything gonna, because you're you're like a dog with a bone and you can't let go of it. Houses to pass a law, you know. But at least you say we sent to the Senate and they sat on it and it died. At least you have a story to tell, and that's the whole point of a censure. You, we had a story to tell, and here's why we did it. And this is for the American public to understand. These are the provisions of the censure, and let the American public take it as it is. And when you finish, <clears throat> and you finally get the Senate to come around, which is you know, a major miracle on anything that Trump doesn't want, he'll veto it. Just as he, ve he vetoed the, um, the Yemen bill, you right. know, the stop uh, supporting the war in Yemen. He vetoed that bill. In order for that to become law now, it has to be overridden. You know, lots of luck. Lots right. of luck. That's not going to happen. Is it the chicken or the egg? You know, um, if enough citizens get riled up enough based on the censure and the information within that censure, <laughs> will they not call their representatives and, and knock on their doors? That's the only thing these people understand. How many times is a day you want them to knock on is, the doors? Is these constituents are actually protesting. And then they start paying attention. But until that happens, they well, sit I'm on their thumbs. It's not only the lawyers, to. it's every one of us. Everyone of us, and I'm afraid what's happening is everyone is overloaded with all of this. They are done with this, is what I hear from so many people. Oh, I don't want to hear any more about that. Oh, I can't watch that anymore. I can't take any more of that. And it's like, wait a minute. That's what all of this has led up to, so that we would do that. Yeah, it's almost by as, design. Yeah, by design, we have been overwhelmed and burnt out, so nobody wants to call there. What good does it do? That's where everyone sits in. You, you see how you see how troubled this is because yeah. you know he's knocking on the press. It's still a war against the press, and uh, tr he's trying to undermine the press at every turn. Uh, and and uh, uh, Sarah um, Huckabee Sanders. Sanders, she's undermining the press at every turn, and there's yes. lies going on. Lies. And at the and same time, lies. the press, as an economic model, is losing money and you know less profitable right. and. Uh, small regional papers uh, are going out of business every day. My mm -hmm. brother was talking about that. And so who is going to report on what is actually happening? For example, the piece in the Times, I think this morning, about how um, the, the military lawyers are going to be assigned to act as immigration lawyers. That's outrageous that and in crazy. violation of policy that's existed since World War II. Um, he's, he's, like, he's recruiting military to do everything. They're going to be doing everything to keep people out of the country. He's, he's enforcing the border with them. Okay, how do we know this about the lawyers? You know, I was reading that article, I was saying, how do we know this? Do we know this because Trump made a, a press release on it? Because a Sarah came out at a little no. uh, nope. you know, press conference in the Rose Garden? She's not doing press conferences anymore, and neither no. is he. No. Right. It's, it's filtered news. It's, it's all planned. It's... Uh, uh, you know, strategical, yep. you know, dissemination. Sound of bites and that's How do we it. know this? Yep. Somebody leaked it. So right. That's how we find out what's going on in this government. Not because the government tells us or shows us or allows us access. Just to the contrary, it always has to get leaked. This is a road to disaster. And he I stands there this morning and says, I'm the most transparent <laughs> president that ever was. I mean, this morning. He said that on his way to the he NRA did. thing. And then at the NRA the conference, the NRA. <laughs> the NRA, he's, he, I'm listening to him talk about how Democrats want to take your guns. They want to let all the illegals in. They want crime to go unchecked. All these just crazy comments. And the crowd is eating it up. They, he wants to um, reverse the bump stock thing. Um, and, he, and, this, and this takes me to the... Whole right. thing about uh, it happened this week, didn't it? 
the militia. Right. The militia <clears throat> was uh, was uh, on the border. On the border, uh, capturing and imprisoning Vigilantes. people they felt uh, yeah. had illegally crossed the border. Uh, they had guns and they were operating, you know, outside the law completely. And uh, I guess the government was letting this happen. The FBI stepped in. I think the FBI, good for them, and they stopped right. it. But wow, you know, this and it reminds me of that whole story about uh, uh, the motorcycle guys. You know, he has the motorcycle guys. Bikers for Trump. Right, hey, I've got the bikers for Trump. Bikers for Trump. And, and they're and all bad has, guys. He has these militia guys for Trump. Right. You know, doing and he his does. Work. And this gives me such a headache, we're going to have to take a short break. I'm okay. sorry. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. We're back. We have much more. Tim, what else do we have? Well, let's just touch a little bit about your concern about the upcoming election, but also let's talk about the candidates, the field of candidates now, a full 20 candidates. Many of them, yeah. <laughs> it's a horse yeah. race. But um, <clears throat> there was, I share your concern about um, the integrity of the 2020 election. And uh, we now are finding out, again, maybe it's through leaks, that um, former DHS. Um, director, Kirsten, Kirsten was actually prohibited from talking to the president about her concerns about Russian interference. McV McVaney, uh, uh, director of staff, said, you're not going to talk about it. You're not going to bring that up. He doesn't like to talk about it because it reminds him that maybe his election as president was somehow not legitimate. And so any talk about Russian interference for 2020 will not be discussed with the President of the United States. How frustrating would that be for you as the Director of you know, Homeland Security and say, I can't talk about real evidence that the Russians are planning midterm and trying to work on their magic on 2020? We're not going to do anything about it. Well, because it benefits And TS Congress is not going to do it. We are, we are at the brink of a major uh, disaster. Right. Crisis. It's every day. You know, the other thing is that, uh, I forget the guy's name, but the one who was just made uh, Homeland Security. Macalini or whatever. Macalini. Mac Macalini or whatever. Macalini, I think. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 he was Macalini. the one. I'm sorry, I can't remember. He was the one who was told um, that he should violate the law, okay, and uh, be, because ignore that law, go do bad things with the, with the, um, the people trying to the cross the border, yeah. and then... Trump would pardon him. Oh my gosh. Right. That, was, that, no. that itself, to me, is impeachment. Right yeah, there. Right, right there. there. That one thing. You, you've broken your oath of office to right. protect the country, follow its laws. Um, you've broken the law by ordering someone to break the law. Right. And then to offer him a pardon. Right. That's abuse on top of law breaking. Abuse on top well, of law breaking. Abuse what, is what, nobody is, what is the House in? of Representatives waiting no. for? They, do they, not only do they have the, the Mullop report, they have all these other th things that they, they can cite and move ahead. What now, are they again, I, I'm not ready for the impeachment because I don't, you know, I think, I, I'm ready for the censor. What do you think the House should do right now? Censor. No, in terms of investigation. They're done investigating. They have all they need. <clears throat> all they need is in that report right now. Well, there's... Talk to most attorneys, they go, if I was a prosecuting attorney, which I used to be, um, it's all right there, and I can move forward. It's, if it was anyone else, it, it, it's a foregone f conclusion. Right. Even just one thing, one thing alone would have been enough. 
to go forward with an impeachment, right? And I think now, after what I learned about censure, because it, they don't just say, okay, you're censured, and it's a stamp. We say, oh, we got the evidence, bam. It's, there's a fight that goes on about it. So he would fight back against yeah, okay, the censure. Okay, what's the next point? Next point. Yeah, we already did this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about, again, the pending election, and Trump's um, he invited the CEO of Twitter to oh, sit, right. to sit at, his, at his desk and complain that Twitter was removing some of his followers. Oh yeah, and, he's and so complaining against Twitter. The CEO is sitting there. Are down. The CEO Jack Dorsey was sitting there in front of the in the Oval Office, in front of the President of the United States, saying, "Yeah, we do remove bots, and we do remove fake accounts. Yes, we are going to remove your followers." And Trump was incensed about incensed about that. Also, he's incensed about all the other social medias are not um, playing ball with him, and that you know is not being as kind and being loyal to the Trump as they should be. Well, you know, Pew Report just uh, came out with a study, and what it showed was that most people on social media are younger, they're wealthier, they're more educated, um, they don't see immigration necessarily as an evil thing, they see it as, you know, an improvement, how the country improves by getting in, you know, all sorts of new, you know, ways of thinking and, and doing work. Um, and so the demographics of social media isn't really in line with Donald Trump right now. But he wants to make it as so. Well, wow. and another, so what I'm saying is this, if you look at this chess game, it's one of the many pieces that he's already preparing for the 2020 election. And that is to get his control on social media and get the CEOs in line. And um, or else maybe we'll do something in Congress about your company. I mean, I mean who knows if he's threatening them, but. I have an interesting fact about Twitter that I thought was pretty amazing. They can block pornography. They can block any kind of ISIS um, recruitment stuff. They don't block white supremacy. They don't block white supremacists. And the little aside thing, and this is coming from the, the higher people you know, in the company of Twitter, um, that it, they might have to block some politicians, if they well, here's block part of, white, white supremacy. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting... Here's one. part of Donald Trump's angst. He's not number one in the Twitter followers. You know who is? Uh, well, excuse me, number two is Barack Obama. Now, <laughs> Donald Trump has about 60 million followers. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. But he's behind Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, the thing is... When it comes to Twitter, it's an amazing statistic is that about 10% of the posters are 80% of the messages. So we have a very finite population of people who are posting and getting the attention of the audience. Well, we found out in the last couple of years that uh, these social media organizations are very dangerous to democracy. Yeah. Yeah, They're algorithm, very dangerous to sure. public opinion. They're very dangerous to, you know, to the truth. Um, a great concern, and he is trying to manipulate that, as you say, for the election, but also running, running up to the election um, in everything he does. Uh, we're, we're seeing, we're seeing a, an acceleration, don't you think, of all this? Well, it's very, I, very concerning. I will argue on one benefit of social media, and that is campaign funding and how raising a grassroots campaign of the $27 you know, for all these candidates rather than one big megalithic um, corporate donate, you know, donation, um, the big the pack money. Packs, yeah, right. Uh, so it's nice to see social media being used to get that grassroots money from voters. Yeah, I'll tell you though, I, I get um, requests for money from every candidate all sure. day long and I have total fatigue over it. And maybe I'm early, maybe um, other people don't have total fatigue, but I think they will because mm -hmm. it keeps on going and going yep, and yep. going. <clears throat> And it's not probative. It's not telling you anything you don't know. It's telling you something, you know, they think you want to hear. They mm -hmm. think you already believe. I, I think it somehow perverts the process yeah. to have you, uh, to send all this mail to you and, and see how many fish it can catch. What else you got? Well, let's talk a little bit about, um, um, again, I, I'd like to go back to the subpoenas and how that's been blocked for everything. It's been, it's By fiat. By fiat. What's that? By fiat, by, by his command. That's how it's been blocked. Right. I guess his reason, I, you, you tell me, his reason is, a, oh, that's a political subpoena. 
Right. That's, that's it's a, over. It's They're just trying to. What did he say? It was a coup. It was a coup. An attempt. They're just Ooh. trying to. Yeah. Trying to overthrow my in administration. That's what he keeps okay. saying. So I'm just starting to see example after example after example of, 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 you know, running away from the Constitution and breaking the laws of the land. We are a nation of laws. And, right. you know, come on. That's, well, maybe that's what the election is all going to be about. Look at Joe Biden. He threw his hat in the ring this Thursday. Um, if you watched his first political ad, it was talking about laws and the nation and where we've gone uh, since, you know, eight years ago, where, where have we gone in the last two years? And what a dramatic decline. And he highlighted Charlottesville, Virginia. And, you know, right. he, you know, and basically his message was, this is a battle about the soul of America. Yeah. Not, and he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about where we've gone in, in the last two years. And I thought it was a very right. powerful, powerful campaign ad. Mm. Well, right. you know, he's got the Anita too. Hill problem. Um, she, she's still mad at him. Yeah, she's still mad at him. Well, he went to her and apologized, yeah. but he didn't say, I'm sorry for what I did, is what some of the well, people are saying. He didn't say, I'm sorry for what I did. He just said, I'm sorry for the way you were treated. And, and there are various groups that are after him for because of that. Know, his yeah. lack well, of and, full apology and some of the criticism, or, or what he did in the first place. Some of the criticism right. well-founded. I mean, he's had many, many years to talk to her and have a one-on-one. -on -one. He only did it recently. Sure. He's, Finally he so, you know, I'm sorry, but yeah. timing is everything. You should have done this a long this, time ago. This is yeah. an example. You take a, a good candidate. I mean, I think he's a good candidate. You take him and apart. I'm not sure he's my favorite candidate, but you take a good candidate and, and then take him apart. Um, and, you know, and it's not so much that Trump would criticize Biden right now. He can wait. He can wait. But he can have his proxies criticize Biden. Yeah. Right. He can get other people, third parties, to come and criticize Biden. He can undermine Biden by using social media attacks that are totally anonymous, you know, coming from who knows where, Russia, for example. Right. And it's those, those little right. things that, you know, that one by one, they knock off the Democratic candidates. Right. And I think we're going to see that. I think we are seeing that. Well, right. we've already yeah. had Trump, and we knew where the nickname was coming. We've talked about it. Sleepy it Joe. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> And so, but you know, said he's too, he's too old. I'm all energetic and young, yeah. right? And so I loved um, Joe Biden's response to that, though, because he just said, well, we all know who Trump is. And then he just kind of smiled yeah, and said, smiled. just stay with me and you'll see how much energy I have. And he but walked here's, away. Here's yeah, why yeah. Joe Biden really does have some gravitas to him. And that is, if you remember the 2016 election, what was he doing? He was going to all the blue collar towns in the Midwest. Right. Uh, midterms. I mean, Joe Biden does have a corner on blue collar workers. Right. And that's what Trump got in Michigan and Wisconsin and Ohio. He got those folks to get out of their chairs and vote for him. Well, I think Joe Biden is a real threat well, to I that. I hope so. He's a I real hope threat so. to that. I hope so. I hope too. so. You know, people have really got to wake up to the problem. <clears throat> so last week I predicted <clears throat> that, that we would have a distraction following the week of Mueller. And now we're in the week post the Mueller, you know, phantasmagoric. Um, and, uh, and, and Trump has got to do a distraction to get away from it, to get away from the inevitable conclusion. There are lots of bad acts mm -hmm. revealed in the, in the uh, Mueller report. Um, so what does he do? He goes to Iran and he tries to impose sanctions against anyone who buys Iran oil. OK, which right. which creates this big tumult in Europe. We haven't seen the other shoe drop oh, on that. Right. Not just we Europe. Not. Remember, and Iran India, in turn, India gets 85% of their oil from Iran. Isn't East Cuba, Asia too? I mean, pardon? East Asia too, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's not just Europe. Yeah. So, so my, they're going to have some angst with this. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really awful what's happening. And Iran de declared everybody in the American military a terrorist. So we're, we're coming to war with Iran. And, and I, su I suggest that's not going to be the end of it. There's more to come next week. Right. So if he wants to stay away from the Mueller report, we should predict there'll be further distraction and it'll be in some direction opposite the Mueller report. Some yes. new, new thread. Something that makes him a hero. So next week, looking forward, you guys, Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, thank you very much on Trump Week. Thank you for having us, Jay. Thank you. Aloha, Nui Loa. Aloha. Aloha, Nui Loa. <laughs>